All right, welcome and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Boost Your SAP, SAP HANA, S4 HANA Migration Project to Azure to drive efficiency, reduce costs, and minimize downtime. I'm Kristen Tanner, Global Marketing Strategist for Proterra Technologies, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. We appreciate all of you taking time out of your very busy schedules to attend today's webinar, and we hope to answer all of your technical questions for your migration path for SAP to Azure. We'll be starting the webinar shortly, but I first wanted to go through a few housekeeping notes. Only our presenter's phones are live. Your microphones have been muted by default to block any background noise. Our presenters will be answering questions at the conclusion of the webinar. If you have a question at that time, please, answer, please type it into your Q&A function on your webinar sidebar. And if we don't get to your question during the presentation, I or another member of the Proterra team will be sure to follow up with you directly. And lastly, this webinar and the other webinars that we have previously recorded will be made available to everyone on the phone today uh, via a link sent um, at the conclusion of the webinar. Now, I would like to introduce today's presenter, Patrick Osterhaus, Chief Technology Officer for Proterra. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks for the introduction. As Kristen mentioned, I am Chief Technology Officer. That's me on the left. And we'll go through the agenda here today, talking about all of our subjects here around the Microsoft Azure solutions for the SAP, SAP HANA, and S4 HANA. So we'll do a quick introduction about Proterra, go through a little bit of background of our company, and then we'll also take a look at SAP and Azure and the State of the Union, what are provided for solutions and some of the information on the, the sizing of those instances that are available and the solutions that uh, in detail what SAP supports and what it takes to be supported on, on Azure. We'll also look at some typical use cases and it's going to go through some real, real examples of customers that are already running on Azure and how they're purposefully using the state of the art innovations in Azure of the cloud to bring best practices into their SAP environment. And we'll also take a look at where to start with this migration. And this will focus upon a tool that we released last year called FlexBridge. And this will help us do migrations very quickly and cost effectively for your environments. And we'll also have an offer at the end for a free assessment. We'll go through those, those simple steps to get that assessment going for you. So a little bit about Proterra. Been in business almost 20 years. This is going to be our 19th year come this October. We're located in Chicago, Illinois. And we're located, as I say, in Chicago for our headquarters. We have offices in Latin America, in Europe, and in Asia. So we're 24-7 for our help desk, which we call AppCare. And I'll talk a little more about this AppCare platform in the next few slides. Um, our mission, we focus upon ITO services. So we always look at us, the central focus around SAP and its peripheral systems. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the other systems that we can fully support and what we provide. Um, and within, those, within that platform of AppCare, we would do the full stack monitoring and management and patching and doing change management, instant resolution, the backups, the DR, HA, all these capabilities and services uh, we provide within this platform called AppCare. Uh, as we see on this bottom slide, bottom part of the slide, the certifications that we've set up for SAP, uh, we have five certifications, and as of last week, we have just been certified globally. So that's a very new cert for us. Uh, so all those five capabilities are recognized by SAP and audited in around the world for all of our service delivery locations. Uh, so the certifications are measured by SAP and we get audited every two years on those, as well as all the processes. So our app care delivery model, those are all reviewed and uh, taken a look at by SAP to make sure that we're, we're providing our services, uh, state of art services, as well as keeping up on, on new requirements from SAP. Also mentioned on certifications, it's not shown here in the slide, but we are SC16 type two, uh, SOC, SOC one type two certified. So we go through that annually which uh, makes sure that we're doing best practices within the industry of IT for all areas. This goes into change management and backups and doing IT the best way possible. So we have that certification. And I also will focus upon our partnerships, our strong partnerships with Microsoft Azure in the cloud, as well as SUSE, which we'll see are, is a very important piece of the platform for HANA and SAP. And as I mentioned about our AppCare platform, we see this as a differentiator in the market. So we have our full services within our cloud uh, brokerage service so we can integrate Microsoft Azure and make it look, those services and those systems look just like they're on-premise. And we can integrate those into existing on-premise 
or other systems that are located in the cloud. So there is no, um, no interruptions to service and also the integration is seamless. So it seems like they're all located in, you know, next to each other in the data center. And lastly, about the, the differentiators, I'd like to mention about, we've been working on HANA since its inception. We've been working in SAP, as I mentioned, for over 20 years uh, for our team. And also we have these, these key strategic partnerships. We really take, um, have high appreciation for our partnerships and staying very close to SAP and SUSE and with Microsoft where the cloud and those technologies are going. So we're staying up on the leading edge of where the technologies are going. So a little more on this AppCare platform. You can, you, it gets abstracted here in this middle piece. So you can think of the whole stack of the cloud and all these pieces that are individually provided to you. Some could say, you know, this is the infrastructure as a service up to um, this layer up to the operating system. So we would take care of all, all the, you know, the maintenance and the requirements for running an SAP system in the cloud. So this includes the backups and any advanced topics that are set up like HA, um, disaster recovery. These are all areas that we have many years of experience with implementing the best practices from SAP and, and, and from ITIL. So we will implement this for a customer. And as I said, being a cloud broker, we will integrate that system in SAP on Azure to make it look like it's on premise. So we would consider all the integration points with the network, any uh, sizing that's required there, as well as any of the touch points, if it's interfaces or any of the you know, security concerns to make sure all the traffic's being encrypted properly. We would all consider this within the design solution of uh, these systems. And as I mentioned before, with SAP, we, we are SAP centric company. So any of the versions of SAP, any products SAP has, we would fully support that. And we have systems ranging from version uh, three up to HANA two. So it's, it, we have the vast majority of um, versions of SAP as well as the different business, you know, business suite products as well as BI and all the flavors that SAP has for different suite of software. You can also see here just the integration parts, you know, we would fully support all these other products that Microsoft has, as well as, you know, any third party integration products, for example, Verse, this text or Vertex, um, you know, any HR processing with ADP, we would fully support those processes. That's an integral piece to a customer's SAP solution. So as I mentioned, it's really key for Proterra to keep on top of where IT trends are going, the new technologies of cloud. And we would bring the, these benefits of cloud into our AppCare platform. So with using the best uh, solutions that are available for Azure and the technologies, we can provide all these five points. So any of the SAP systems or even you know, other point solutions you have to integrate to SAP, we can bring all these advantages of the Azure cloud to that system. So the flexibility, of being able to very quickly bring up a system and having the choice of apps for deployment options. That's certainly available within the Azure Cloud. We can certainly and very quickly scale up and down systems. So this can be scale up where you can add memory you know, and make a system larger, or you could scale it out where we would add multiple servers. So this is good for web applications. And even for HANA, uh, you'll see later some of the options that we can scale out HANA and BI. The rapid deployment with agility, We'll have a case study here a little bit later that describes how important we've used this feature of Azure in, in being able to rapidly deploy applications, even custom applications within SAP and in SAP's package solutions, just to quickly prototype new functionality and uh, bring, bring those to market for your companies. And lastly, always a very big focus on security and efficiency. So security is built in within the Azure cloud. We want to make sure that we're using the best practices there. So it's uh, designed with security in mind, as well as you know, all the operations and monitoring is set up to make sure the system is secure. Um, when I say system, the whole, the whole platform. And, and also efficiency, because the best thing of cloud is that we can run systems in the right size, so we can scale up and scale down when they're not used, we can even turn them off. And, and we can use that to drive our costs down. So we, we can simplify our solution and uh, save money at the same time. So I think this is the last slide actually on us. So I'll talk a little bit because it's important to understand our background and why, it, uh, why it's enabled us to, to speak on this topic with migrations as well as our expertise with the building this product. So over 20 years ago, we, we started doing migrations and managing SAP systems uh, for moving on-premise uh, on systems to other data centers at the time. And then when cloud started to evolve in the late 2000s, actually moving systems in the cloud. And 
this came in through our design expertise. So doing full implementations for customers. So we would, from the beginning, be brought in to look at the design of how SAP systems should be designed, you know, what systems should be looked at, what operating systems, and also the sizing of it. And looking at proof of concepts for companies that are just starting to use SAP. So within the design, we would still be uh, utilized then for doing the deployment. So this would, this would be even migrations or implementations with multi-year migrations back in the 90s. And then once uh, it was ran on, uh, you know, Unix was very popular in the 90s and early 2000s. And then we saw a lot of wave of migrations into Linux. So having expertise in all the processes and, and best practices around how to migrate SAP from Unix to Linux, we, we continue to innovate our processes around migration to the point where, you know, we're, we're running these uh, with the run with the AMS services we provide, which is uh, our SAP operations and those services, which we can even do for an on-premise customer who, where we wouldn't fully host that environment. And this would extend again to the, the DR setup, the backups, and optimizing the system. So not only for performance of how the system runs and making sure jobs runs as fast as possible and continually patching the system, making sure they run in a sufficient manner, but also looking at those new technologies and bringing in the cloud features when they're available. So the run optimization phase is continuous and never ending for those improvements. So over these 20 years of doing the design, the deploy and run, it puts us in a position that we have this collection of knowledge of how we can best improve doing migrations into, into the cloud. So we'll, we'll talk about that um, a little bit right here on the slide. So on the right side, to, to finish that topic, the AppCare is our platform being a cloud broker, so we integrate on-premise customer systems in with all of our processes. So this includes our 24-7 help desk, the backups, the monitoring, all the security features, you know, all, all those areas we fully take advantage of and, and take care of for customer, including the hosting. So this would be all the, the I infrastructure care, as well as uh, the service delivery and the AMS, the, the SAP level. And as I mentioned, you know, all the years prior before AppCare uh, became our platform in the years we were building it, we were providing professional services on the bottom. So we still do it uh, for the very technical, very challenging technical projects we still are brought in and you know, happy to help those, uh, those opportunities and make sure customers are successful. So I'll, I'll now talk about the, the migrations and that's our newest line of business, which is Proterra FlexBridge. I'll show a little more about the product later, yet I wanted to talk about the challenge here in the market first. So this slide here talks about, you know, we know that there's going to be a mass move of SAP customers that are not on HANA yet to go to in-memory, either HANA or S4 HANA. And the question is going to be asked, is being asked now, is how is customers going to get there? So the first path from the top, we could certainly, you know, do a, a path where a re-implementation is done or you may have a HANA or an S4 system that coexists with the existing system and there's some data sharing and integrated. That's certainly an option some companies are re-implementing, um, especially around S4, to bring in this new capabilities and these new features. Now, the, the other, what we see more, more interest in and uh, more questions around is around the bottom uh, tree structure, and that is taking the existing SAP application and either doing a lift or shift, lift and shift, I should say, or doing this operating system database migration. So the point on this and the big, big difference is on the lift and shift, you're basically just, you're moving the compute from on-premise to a cloud or from one cloud to another. It doesn't really provide much flexibility on changing out any versions. So if you have um, end of life issues where your uh, operating system needs to get migrated or your database or, or your hardware, it, it really is just fixing the solution on the hardware side. Because uh, in the lift and shift, there's not a huge opportunity for you to do changes on the software. Whereas the OSDB migration provides those capabilities where you can change some of the pieces um, in one step. And then you, you change, essentially, you could change the operating system database in one step. But if you wanted to change the SAP version and go to HANA, that might be an additional step on it. So it's certainly, in the past, has been um, the, the approach for bringing in new technology. You know, going to HANA, this is one approach to do this. Um, or changing an operating system or database, it's certainly an option. Um, we think there's a better way, uh, which we've, we've been working on here, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So to, to, to close out, I've got two more slides here on AppCare to put these, these services together. 
This is uh, one last slide to talk about the AppCare platform and the services around it. So again, the technical EMS, uh, which is the operating system, the database, you know, the basis area, essentially, what we consider. And all the, you know, the care and feeding and the higher level, you know, requirements around capacity planning, uh, setting up the DR and HA and, and continually improving that platform. So that, that's the technical AMS portion. I mentioned infrastructure, to, so taking care of the Azure, making sure that we're applying all the best practices for cloud, how we can run SAP in the cloud especially, as well as spend optimization. So looking at, you know, continuously looking at how we can lower the cost of infrastructure in the cloud. So looking at, you know, options to, um, to um, right size systems, you know, if they're running on premise to make sure that they're running in the proper size in the cloud. And also looking at, you know, capabilities where we can bring systems up and down in the schedule, as well as looking at, you know, prepaying for, for instances. And then the app care, as you mentioned, is, is uh, I mentioned, and uh, what we talked about here about the, the platform on what's all provided here. So the, the key point here is it's a monthly subscription and it's a guaranteed SLA. So, it's all backed financially, and uh, there's SLAs for the performance of the system and the performance of our team. And the last point in the slide is the functional EMS. So it's an area that we, Proterra, do not provide ourselves. We will always partner with the, the best partners in you know, the respective areas for functional. So it's something that we, we see is vitally important, and we, we're happy to work with many partners as well as the customers themselves. We, we expect and uh, rely upon their expertise to help uh, drive projects, especially around migrations. We, we can't do it just on our own. And this is the last slide, but we'll talk about the AppCare platform. And this is just an example of, you can see for this packaged solution, which comes in sizes, you would have the three typical, uh, typical three tier landscape, which would be dev quality and production. You'd see this and then it's priced by sizing. So that includes SAPs as well as the, you know, the sizing of uh, how many users would be, this would all be packaged. So again, you know, monthly costs and it's guaranteed SLA and performance. A little bit on the success story. So I'll switch gears here and we're going to get more now into our topic around Azure and migrations here. Um, before I go there, just uh, our sampling of some of the customers that we've been uh, fortunate to have their business for many years. And also, I'll come back on this slide, so we won't talk in detail now. These are some custom profiles we'll talk in more detail on the use cases here, specifically for Azure. So lastly, before we switch gears uh, to Azure specifically, it's the Proterra difference. So, you know, again, the expertise doing SAP for over 20 years as a company, um, our, not only are our people certified, but also the process, the platform itself. So again, that, that global certification in the five areas, it's something that we care a lot about and we spend a lot of time and energy in those areas to make sure that we're staying on top of SAP's best practices and as well as uh, you know, the IT best practices, make sure we're doing uh, SAP and IT the proper and best way. Also value, extremely value our Microsoft Alliance and being a cloud service provider. So making sure we get the latest training, keeping up on all the trends and new features. Um, you'll see here very soon some new new capabilities in the Azure Cloud for SAP. So we want to make sure that we're, we're providing the best value to our customers in Azure. And I mentioned before that Azure, I'm sorry, that the SUSE partnership, this is on the operating system layer level, which is um, the, the preferred operating system from Proterra to run HANA on. So our, our best practices around HA and DR use SUSE's uh, expertise. And we don't have a slide in this webinar, so I'll mention it here is we've captured great value with the patching improvements they've made on the operating system and the newest version is version 12, it provides us to have minimal downtime so we can easily take outages every quarter to get those security patches in on the operating system. It's been a key benefit for our patching. And then mentioned about the cloud broker. So integration essentially of the Azure cloud back to on-premise, making it seamless so customers don't even know where their systems are running. They just see that uh, the SLAs are being met, uh, high performing systems and, and systems are, are available. And again, you know, the value of a, a joint development activities with Microsoft stay in lockstep. So we'll talk about the, the SAP systems that are available in Azure. And as you can see, the list is long. So we have the SAP business suite, which includes ERP. And then the third bullet there has the other business suite systems. So this is this includes the CRM system, SRM, CRM, I'm sorry, SCM, CRM, and SRM. 
as well as Solution Manager. We had the BI Systems BW. Um, the B4 HANA is not on this list, it should be. Um, and then the HANA Live and Sidecards, and, and lastly the Business One. So all these scenarios are fully supported. Um, we, we see customers, you'll see in the examples here, we have almost examples of every single one of these running in, in the HANA uh, platform on Azure. And there's OSS notes we'll have later you can refer to on the more specific details. Speaking of SAP notes, there's one here. This is on the Microsoft Azure support requirements. So to run, it's not necessarily required for not production, but definitely for production, you're gonna need Microsoft Premier support. So you need that support contract. Uh, we can provide that if you work with us uh, to provide the SAP services. That this guarantees that when production level issues occur that the proper SLA response is provided to look at the Azure stack and, and you know, see if there's a, an issue there. So we, we require that premier support and not just us, but it's a requirement from SAP, as well as turning on these monitoring extensions. So for SAP and the, the capabilities within the SAP monitoring software, they have to see into the Azure cloud. So we have to enable those cloud extensions in Azure to be able to see, uh, be seen from SAP. And lastly, there's requirements on networking. So this, especially around HANA, is a requirement for the speed of the connections, not only within the WAN, I'm sorry, within the LAN, within the, within the cloud, within uh, inter systems, but also uh, the WAN. So there's requirements um, and security requirements, especially around having connections to the Azure cloud and, and how that's done. And then lastly, again, around HANA requirements, uh, we. SAP requires the storage that it's you know sufficient so the IAPS provides what's required for SAPS ratings for making sure those SAP systems are performing properly. And we'll see actually a little bit on that in the next slide here on uh, the SAPS ratings for different different tiers of the instances. As I mentioned, uh, you know we have options to change the sizing of a system, and that's one of the nice advantages of the Azure Cloud is that you can literally just bring the system down and up and resize it. Um, so we can scale up on Azure up to three terabytes currently and within the um, That's for for the ECC the business suite systems for OLAP for the BW can actually scale out So we combine those systems we pair them up into a grouping and they can go up to 32 terabytes currently And you can see that the, the sizes, uh, you know, the chipsets It's the, the latest e7 chipsets from Intel which provides this the horsepower and the scale out so on the SAPS ratings, you, there's three slides here. I'll get to uh, the HANA last, but this first one could be used for non-production. It would be probably the best, the best suited here. You can see the SAPS ratings for this is collective for the three tier. When we say three tier, this would be development quality production. So you can see the accumulation there. It has the, the VM type, which is the left column. That's the Azure name. And then it has the sizing in CPU and in um, RAM. So that's the, the compute area. Obviously, the, the storage would be uh, separate. That could be dynamic. The, the customer or ourselves would create that when the instance is launched. You can see also the, um, the required Azure storage. You can see the standard. So there's, there's IOPS uh, specs for that. You'll see here that change. Where now these instance classes, they have um, higher SAPS ratings. So you can see all the way down to GS4, some really large SAPS available. And the storage would change there where it requires the premium storage. So that's the, the solid state drives. And then lastly, this is the SAP HANA and S4 HANA sizes that's available. So we can scale up to three terabytes and as well um, on BW, as I showed in the previous screen, up to 32 terabytes and scale out. All right. So a lot of options there for SAP systems and the instances on Azure. So let's take a look at how customers have used this. So again, these three customers, you're, you'll see in detail which each one has done. Um, that they've uh, done different use cases for each of their uh, implementations. So we'll, we'll go through the Tate and Lyle, the, the bottom company there first. So Tate and Lyle is actually moving their SAP systems or production SAP systems into Azure right now. So they're they're going through the first two areas, which is the HANA migrations, the OS migrations. That's been combined into this, these migration services, which we call FlexBridge, and we'll talk more about that. You can see the advantages to this. So the HANA migrations provide that support to you know 
well, beyond 2025. That's when uh, SAP says, you know, the standard support needs to be moved. Uh, a customer, I should say, a customer in standard support should be moved to HANA by 2025. So this provides the alignment with the SAP roadmap where all new SAP development's going. And also the huge jump in, in memory computing. So if we don't even take advantage of any of the analytics and those improvements, we will see vast improvements just in the daily processing and sales orders and MRP runs. So the company is capturing those those improvements from the new uh, developments from SAP and, and HANA and S4, as well as when they're going, they're going to uh, the Azure Cloud is involves uh, OS migration. So this allows them to capture the value of going to SUSE for HANA and providing all those new features like the live patching and uh, the enhanced DR and HA setup. So they get to capture reduced cost yet provide better functionality and actually simplifying their environment. Uh, one of the recommendations we have is actually putting uh, the instance, you know, consolidating those instances that you may have multiple uh, running uh, for a, a non-HANA system and consolidating those into running into the platform of, of the uh, HANA system. So this simplifies the HA setup as well as the VR. So it's that's something that reducing the cost and it reduces actually the complexity. And lastly, the, the cloud initiatives where it provides Tate and Lyle the capability you now to quickly copy systems. Um, they can spin off test environments very, very fast. And they can prototype so they can they can look at what a new support package looks like or putting, you know, building out a new area of CRM. They could prototype this very, very quickly in the cloud. Uh, so it's, it's some area that they're they're capturing the value of. These three new areas here. The, uh, I'll start with the SAP production systems. This is Elevance. They just moved their, their landscape uh, over to the Azure Cloud. And this was actually done over a weekend. Uh, there was, the outage was actually just a few minutes and that was set up through, uh, through the FlexBridge migration where we could basically move those systems over with a minimal outage to the customer. So again, capturing the value of cloud and minimizing cost and, and providing that, that scalability and uh, the elasticity where they can bring systems up and down very quickly. The, the non-production systems, this is something with our partnership with Suzy, we've, we've actually packaged our FlexBridge development. There's a piece that you'll see here later in the slide deck uh, that talks about how we do an assessment and actually all the prototypes of, of how we rolled out that software was all done in the Azure Cloud with Suzy within their, they call RPM packaging. So when a customer installs SUSE, they actually can get the FlexBridge software built right in it. And, and we did this, our, our, our own prototyping was done with the SUSE operating system on Azure. So very quick, uh, very agile development cycle, and we could iteratively bring out uh, a new version very quickly. And then also, and I'll probably mention this, it's, it's the last case example, but it's actually the first one most companies start with, and that's around DR. So Carmel Flow, we, we host Chromaflow, their Bob J, as well as their ECC system currently. And they were very interested in setting up a DR system. So that DR system is now set to replicate into Azure. So at any time, we can quiesce the replication, take a pause. And during that time, the DR is never at risk. It's always kept to sync. And then we would, during this, this pause of a few seconds, we would actually instantiate a copy of that system and when that copy completes in a few minutes, we would actually be able to have not only this replicated system continuously being updated for DR, so the customer's always protected, but we'd have this now test environment where we can do tests, we can, we can test the DR itself and the processes, the business continuity process from the customer. We can also do, um, you know, uh, basically use that new instantiated landscape as a test environment. So again, testing new config, um, if they wanna try an upgrade, Wherever it might be, they have this new test landscape in a few minutes uh, from the copy of DR. All right, so we'll go back to the slide here, talking about our options here for migration. Uh, I've talked about you know, either the re-implementation, so you can do new, new deployment, or you can look at this migration path, which is on the bottom. And that includes the lift and shift, which there is tools in the market where you could do a copy, you know, byte by byte copy from on-premise over to the Azure Cloud. Or you can even do a backup or store or set up a system as a DR and, you know, fail it over. So those are certainly all options. What we wanted to suggest and, and, and enter as an idea is a product we've been working on for the last couple of years and that provides the target to go to Azure, 
to even private cloud. So if a company has their own cloud they've built out, uh, we could use that as a target, as well as hybrid cloud. So there's many options for the target here, which we talk about FlexBridge, which is this business line here that I have yet to talk about. So this slide here probably is the best, best um, capture of what the, what the tool set, what the service provides. So if we look at you know, the three spheres that are in blue, it's, it's a methodology, as I mentioned, over these 20 years of doing a lot of migrations, you know, first to different data centers and then uh, to the cloud. We, we've come up with a good recipe of the best practices of how migrations should be done. And so we've packaged that, instead of having all this knowledge in, in people's heads, we put this into software. So we follow those best practices and, and forced to do the right thing each time. The, the tools portion comes through as uh, the assessment, which you see in white. So I'll show you again how we can do that for a customer, for anyone that's on the call here today. And then also the tools automate the process. So we use certified SAP tools to migrate and we sit on top of those tools so that the automation provides uh, the best the best loading of the configuration to run the tool set as well as to ensure the tool runs in the not only the best practice you know the best config but also to ensure that any failures that happen are instantly um, notified to our, our migration specialist as well as keeping a knowledge base which is this last uh, point here to make sure that when a problem occurs it can actually notify our migration experts to actually how to fix that issue. And we're working on the automation port portion of even uh, providing the solutions and, and making that recommendation once that issue occurs. It's, it's really important, the last, last sphere here I haven't speak, spoken to is this, the services area, that it's just not a software solution. Uh, you're, you're gonna be, the customers are gonna be talking directly to the FlexBridge migration experts. That's the, our, our experts around migration. So any questions that the customer has, especially around methodology and what we're doing for the technical migration, those will all be covered. So it, it, the solution is, is three pieces and the, the software talks to, you know, the knowledge base, the automation assessment are all components of how the tool, the software works. The, the big idea here is, is um, I talked about the how first. I, this is the why, and maybe I should have brought that up first. And the, the why, why we think it's a significant idea is it's able to do all these migrations at the same time. So as you looked at doing, a, you know, an as-is migration where you're going to copy the system and you can't, you're just going to really just change the platform of, of the hardware. What the idea we have here is you can transform the business by doing all these migrations at the same time. So we can go from um, one operating system to SUSE Linux and migrate it onto, um, onto the Azure. So you get the cloud migration at the same time. We can do the database migration and we can couple that with the SAP upgrade. So you can do all these major transformation projects in one downtime and one testing cycle. So it's a, it's a significant idea in that, in that regard. We, we have a, a company that we're doing this migration for today and they had two one year projects planned out where they were gonna do the, the migration to cloud and they were gonna go to HANA separately. And so they, they were, challenge with that because they wanted to get to cloud even beyond before that first year deadline. And so we were able to provide not only go to the cloud, but also do the HANA and SAP upgrade all within six months. So the idea is that combining these, there's huge um, efficiencies as well as cost savings to, to minimize the time for doing all these projects. So how we do this is described in the assessment report. And this is something that we're offering here for, for a limited time, that'll be free. So especially anyone that's on this call today, uh, we'll have the information on how you can get this here shortly. But we'll talk a little bit about what it has in it and how you can get it. So the, the steps to get it is, it's an ABAP program. You can run it, we'll give you the source code, we'll give you transport. You run this in the ABAP stack system. So uh, right now it's, you know, pretty much any ABOP system that can run an ABOP report, uh, it, it's compatible with. And you, know, you can talk offline, feel free to reach out to us, all the operating system that it supports. It's you know all the, all the flavors of Unix, all the flavors of Linux, uh, the Windows operating systems, those can be supported to, for us to do analysis on, on the source environment. So to get this, you can register through our link. And once registered, we'll send you this, uh, either the source code or a transport, whatever your preference is, the, the ease of uh, implementing this. And once it's run, it runs in a couple minutes, 
we'll have a text file generated that's sent back to us. Uh, this, this text file, you can see it's a very small screenshot here, but it's an XML format. So all the information that we take from that customer system, it's just the vitals. So it's you know the size of the system, what versions of the database and app ring system and versions of SAP that are running, that's all captured and sent back to us. But you can easily see you know exactly all the information. There's no financial data, no customer organization or um, distribution channels or anything that's business data for the customers, obviously high, highly sensitive and we do not select that. So once you send that XML customer, uh, that data back to us, we will generate automatically a report uh, to, it's gonna have all your um, information about your source system and then also we'll describe the path of going to HANA. So here's the sections here, just a high, high level overview. So the executive summary we've written to the C-level um, executives of the company just to describe what this migration will provide. So it talks a little bit about the HANA capabilities as well as moving to cloud and also provide a high level budget in the project plan. So we'll see that all within that executive summary is basically, as it says, a summary of the report. This next section, which we'll, we'll see a little sneak preview, I think it's in the next slide, just on the source system, what it's gonna pull from, from your environment. We recommend that this, this reports run in every system that you wanna migrate. So if you have an ECC system, you do a dev quality production. If you wanna do BI also, you do those three systems. So we would give up a, a report per landscape, but yeah, each, each landscape is going to be um, look at whole. So we'll have each system for that landscape spelled out in this report. We'll have the migration overview for all those systems. And then we'll have a, a proposed customer solution. So this will actually give you a, a diagram of the solution in Azure. We'll talk about the sizing in the Azure instances, you know, specifically on Azure. And uh, you know it's it's a it's a good document that gives you a good introduction of what the system is going to be sized and, and priced in the Azure Cloud. And lastly, we have some appendices. Uh, we have a Proter overview, and then we also have the benefits of the cloud. Just you know the 101 uh, why you should be looking at cloud, and specifically the benefits of the Azure Cloud. So this uh, section, the second one. Uh, I get a lot of questions about what we'll actually cover, and in this we're continually updating this almost every week of new data we're putting in here. Right now, today, some of the areas are, you know, the, the key areas that we gotta focus upon when you're looking to go to HANA. So this would focus upon that, the versions of the operating system, the database, SAP itself, um, if you're already on Unicode or not. If you're not, then it's something that we can, we can do as part of this uh, migration. It looks if, if Java is installed, if it is, we have to separate that before we actually do the migration, so we look at this. And then it looks at other, other items that might be required to be remediated. So for example, the central instance that refers to moving a system from on-premise to the cloud, there's some, some changes that have to be done for connectivity. And also we look at the components. So this would be you know, the hundreds of versions of software that make up an SAP ERP system, for example. We, we look through those, make sure the versions are compatible with going to HANA, no patching or um, you know, any loss of functionality would, be, would occur going to HANA. And then lastly, we look at those third-party integrations and just connectivity in general. What does the system today connect to just so we have consideration of what might also have to get migrated. This slide uh, has a lot of information on it, but the key part here is that this migration tool fits in with the top two pieces around project management and the basis technical. We've built in automation around the project management, so our hope is to help minimize the effort and, uh, you know, the the, the need for project management on the customer side. So this helps simplify that area, as well as automating and taking care of all the basis technical area for this migration. Uh, so that the last piece here, which is very, very important, is the functional aspect. So the functional, we still need the customer to drive that or an SI, you know, partner to help, uh, you know, train, train and business re-engineer any of those processes going to honor the SAP version is going to be different. But that's still a key part of the migration that uh, you know, we, we need good cooperation to make sure it's successful. So part of this assessment, as I mentioned, is going to talk about this architecture, and especially around looking to go to Azure and what you're going to need to look at and be, you know, be up to snuff on. So this includes the networking. So here it's called Express Route. This is the, the dedicated uh, network connection that goes into Azure Cloud with SLAs. So guaranteed uh, speed and, and uh, performance, as well as looking at the sizing of the HANA system. So we had slides before and we look at the SAP system, the source system at the size 
and we also look if it's compressed or not, and we will give you a sizing, an estimated sizing for each system of what you're going to have to run in the Azure for the compute. And we'll make recommendations on the storage. So there, there's, uh, within HANA, it's required to run SSD, and you want to do that for the performance, obviously. But we'll look at that for you know the whole landscape. And then, as mentioned before, these app servers a scale out. So this is uh, to make sure that your workload is properly sized. We would look at that. And then we're also going to make recommendations on HA and DR. So this is always an option. And obviously, the best practices around backups, which is an integral part to SAP operations. We want to make sure we're doing uh, the very best using the latest technology that is Azure and all the innovation they have built in there. And you see here, lastly, the, the opportunities for us to scale up and scale down, save money. This slide here is a summary of the, the previous slide on what the SAP products are and, and some, some good uh, recommendations on sizes. This would come out in the assessment. So we would, uh, we take all the, you know, the different varying sizes of the, the nodes that are available in Azure and we'll, we'll purposefully size them for the solution that we're going to look at here for Azure. So as I mentioned, you know, feel free to reach out to Kristen or myself. Um, if you go to any of these links on our website, you, there's a link on our main page on, under FlexBridge. You can get a direct link to sign up for the assessment report. Happy to do that and uh, get, get you all the information on what it takes to go to HANA on Azure. And also we got some additional information. You can see some sample reports, uh, but prefer probably be easier just to see a customer, see your, your own custom solution, your own system in, in the report will make more sense. And also we have some preferred information just on high level uh, introduction on the on YouTube. So we got a couple questions. I know we're coming close on time here. I think we only got three minutes left. So um, feel free to ask any questions in the Q and A section. Uh, they're coming in now. Okay, got, got the first one here. Um, so the, the first question that came in is around the sizes of Azure. We, we saw some slides on you know, what's available today. And the question is, when will at the, the three terabytes, the max now, when would be larger size available? Um, that's the question. So as of this point, this, we have the most current information. Um, that's uh, three terabytes is the maximum right now. I've heard uh, releasing a, a larger size very, very soon. I would fully expect that we will have um, big announcements around Sapphire. That typically is what we've seen. And, you know, fully expect that, that trend to continue. I noticed in the last year, many, many instance types have been released. Um, so that I'm sure will continue here in the future. Okay, another question here is on operating systems. And that's a good question because that is not talked about in our, our slide deck. So uh, there is a note I, I can uh, feel free to reach out to me, whoever asked this question. Um, I will provide the, the SAP note. Um, but in general, it's any x86, so that includes Linux and the Windows operating systems is supported in Azure. And there's a few other ones as well as the database information. But um, the guidance around the x86 is the, is the easiest way to summarize what operating systems are supported. And then I think we got time for maybe one more. So there's a couple more here that came in. I'll try to fit both in. But um, the question is around what, what is the recommended approach on DR for Azure? So this question actually has quite a few options. Um, we, we actually did a webinar a few weeks ago on this topic on DR. So the, the nice thing about the Azure Cloud is it can be a target for on-premise or it could be a target for, you know, from um, another cloud or Azure itself. Um, there's, there's some very cool technology around the Azure site recovery, which is worth looking at um, that has, some pre-baked, you know, replication solutions into the product itself. So that, that would be my first recommendation of how to do DR into Azure. Uh, just use their, their best, uh, the, the tools that they've already provided. Uh, but certainly there's other options. There's, there's some third-party third -party products that provide DR solutions, as well as uh, using the database itself. So HANA's DR you could build in, um, or, you know, if it's, if it's not HANA, um, you know, for example, the Oracle database um, using replication or SQL Server, uh, you can replicate to a target. So that those are there's many many options. We have a separate webinar just on that topic. Um, the 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 um, site recovery, Azure site recovery, ASR is certainly a good topic to look at for DR specifically. 
And then we got like a half minute left here. HA just came in. Um, there's a, a very good um, suggestions around Susie. So whoever asked that, I'm happy to uh, follow up with that question on email and give you some, some webinars and some uh, PowerPoints of some guidance around HA. And then uh, the last few seconds, we encourage you, uh, invite you to come to our next webinar on Azure. And this is going to be around the success story around a customer. So it's uh, always love these because it's the real life examples and the, the business value that's captured. So, so please attend that in a few weeks here. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Kristen. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. That was a super great webinar. Um, hope everyone got their questions answered and a lot of great information was covered um, in today's session. So if there's not any other questions, we will let you all go. Um, but thanks again. And we will be following up um, after the webinar. In addition to all the recordings will be available um, on our YouTube page. Thank you. Thank you.